Welcome to the Becoming a Streamer podcast by Pipeline. We dive deeper into how streamers got to where they're at today and learn more about their journey. I am your host, co-founder of Pipeline, Stone Mountain 64, and today we are joined by Julie, aka One Shot Girl. Streaming for the last five years, she's now full-time streaming over 150 hours a month. She has over a half a million subscribers on YouTube and is one of the most positive professional streamers on Twitch. She's not afraid of making moves, leaving her job to pursue a passion, being a front runner on YouTube gaming, and then moving over to Twitch. She's a massive inspiration, and you can find her on her socials at One Shot Girl, specifically at twitch.tv slash O-N-E underscore shot underscore G-U-R-L. Without further ado, enjoy the interview. Uh, Julie, really appreciate you joining in on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> Super excited to have you. Thanks for having me. Seriously, I know these, these things are a lot of work. So you, thank you for taking time to even do this and, and having me be on. So it, it's truly an honor. Yeah, no, it's fun. And uh, honestly, you were one of the people that came to my mind first of wanting to even get on this because I've I've been following you for so long on YouTube mm. and, you yeah. know, coming to Twitch and everything. And now it's like, you know, see where you are at today, too. It's just yeah. it's super awesome. And obviously, I've seen you at a bunch of events and everything, yeah. too. But um, before we get too deep in everything, I like to just start, you know, like, where are you at right now with where you're creating, what you're creating and and everything? Yeah. So primarily right now, most of my content lives on Twitch through live streams. So I live stream every day for four to six hours and it's gaming content for the for the most part, uh, like 90 percent of it is gaming content. Um, and then I'm also like super active on Instagram and Twitter. And I even made a TikTok a couple months ago. So I try to post every day or every other day, I try to post like a little snippet, a little highlight, you know, 10 to 30 seconds, you know, something funny that happened from my stream or maybe an awesome moment, you know, good gameplay if that happens. Um, So (laughs) yeah, usually that's, you can find me just about anywhere. And then I I upload on YouTube, maybe like once a week as well, but majority of my content lives on Twitch. And I mean, you got one shot girl, in your name right so like is that is it mostly shooters i mean obviously i know you play a lot of shooters and stuff but is that like the the main type of content you create yeah definitely that's that's the bread and butter so i love fps i love battle royales but i mean like just the other day i did i called it a scream stream i did like a horror game so i'm doing a little mini series in february where every saturday i'm doing a scary game so but the majority is Uh, you know a first person shooter for the most part i love that (laughs) I love that. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you do like the scary alerts too? Yes. Do you do that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's shameful, but I, I think in about three and a half hours, I scream, we had a screen counter. I screamed almost 90 times. So yeah, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. Oh, that's mm. good. Before you got into streaming and everything though, um, or I mean like, I, uh, when did you really get into it? I guess like, or what, what did you do before that? I guess. Yeah. So Long, I'm just gonna make a very long story as short as I can. But so I'm I'm a Midwest girl. So I was, you know, raised in Ohio. I went to college in Indiana. And after I graduated, I came back to Ohio uh-huh. and I was like, you know what? Like I want a new experience. And I up and moved to New York City. So I did that for about a year and a half. And I've worked customer service jobs like my whole life. So um like just my, my whole life. Anything with people, like I've always loved people interacting, learning you know, new things about people, things like that. But um, I did customer service jobs and I, I moved to New York City and I was I originally started in a CS job in a, in a smaller company who sold continuing legal education online. I know, super interesting, super interesting. <laughs> but uh, eventually they kept like promoting me, promoting me because it was a smaller company and I was working my butt off and they really loved me. But the more they promoted me, the more I got away from my passion, which was people initially. Uh, in that company. And they, you know, it eventually turned into more of an analytical job where I was analyzing spreadsheets and working with data and numbers. And I'm good at that, which is why they promoted me, but it wasn't where my heart was. So, you know, the more money I made, the more miserable I got kind of a thing, because I was moving away from my passion. So one day, literally, I was like sitting at my desk and I was like, I am so not happy. I'm like, I'm just not happy. I don't want to do this. And I called up my dad because back then this was, this was about five years ago. Back then, I don't know if you remember, but like PewDiePie, Jacksepti- Jacksepticeye, Markiplier were doing like these super long, like 30 part playthroughs of like single yeah. player games. 
Yeah. So like that was super popular mm-hmm. and I've always loved video games. That was a passion of mine as well. And I was like, you know what? I, I can do that. Like, why can't I do that kind of a thing? So I called on my dad and I was like, dad, it's like, I want to start a YouTube channel. And he literally was like, what's a YouTube channel? And I was like, oh gosh, here we go. Um, but <laughs> long story short, they let me move back into their basement so that, you know, I could save some money, try this thing out, see where it went. And I originally, I was like, okay, I had saved up money. So I, I was like, I'm going to give myself a year to do this. I had money saved up. My parents were super gracious and didn't charge me a ton of rent. So ultimately here we are about five years later, it has worked out, but yeah, that's the long story short. Yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and so when you graduated college, is that when you moved to New York then? So I initially came back to Ohio for like a year, a year and a half. Okay. Um, yeah. And I got a music degree, but because again, I knew my passions in life. I knew I loved gaming. I loved music and I loved people. So I just didn't know how, like, I didn't know what to do with that to make a living. Yeah. I mean, that's all, it's all very so, like artistic, <laughs> yeah. very like, you know, it, it's, it doesn't really fit in a specific thing. So I could yeah. definitely, I mean, I could definitely see how you're sitting at work even though you're making progress and stuff in a lot of ways is even similar to what I was doing. I was working in finance before and then, Mm -hmm. you know, doesn't really transition to this super well either. But I mean, what do you, do you think some of that, I guess maybe it was more your schooling or I guess you're past in even playing games. Is that what interested you more when you saw YouTube and saw that coming up? Was it like, you know, those creators in particular, was there anything else that you were watching? I was like, Ooh, gaming, I could go yeah. for an Avenue on this. That's a great question. I think it was more so it kind of just came to a boiling point where it was like, I just, I was so miserable and I realized I was like, this is what it's like to, <laughs> to not be using my passion. And I was like, this is like the worst feeling. I never want to feel like this. And I saw mm-hmm. other people be successful PewDiePie, right? Like back then there was like an article, I think that came out that you know, one of the top 10 earners on YouTube was a gamer and it was PewDiePie. So I saw that and I, you know, I, I constantly was like watching some other videos and I just knew I was like, okay, well, these, these people are successful, right. you know, doing their passion. Why, like, why can't that be me? Like, why do I have to sit behind this desk and be miserable to make a living? So I was like, I just want to try it. So it was more so honestly, just kind of, I was just like, I'm done. Like, I just, I need to get out of here and try. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. And so you weren't even necessarily watching like any gaming creators per se. It was kind of like, you know, you saw an article and was like, oh, wow, this is cool. Right. Yeah. I saw the article. I knew of PewDiePie, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. Like I knew gaming was huge. It wasn't like I didn't have like a vested interest in a certain like person or I didn't even know like that streaming was a thing back then, which is a whole other story. But yeah, it was more so I saw these people, I knew they were successful doing what they love. And I was like, seriously, like I can do that. I can play games, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of just what it was. As crazy as that sounds. That's so awesome. And then, okay. So then walk me through, like you're you're going back, (laughs) you're wanting to start all this stuff up, you're figuring out everything that you need to start making videos. I mean, do you start with, you start on YouTube, right? And like, is that, uh, as videos, as streaming? Is that when you found streaming? Yeah. So that's a good question. So when I first started on YouTube and I was just on YouTube, I was doing like those long 30 part walkthroughs of these like single player games. Cause that's again, what I saw the the top creators doing at the time. So it was like, oh, I did like heavy rain and heavy rain back then was even like an older game. So uh-huh. it was like already a couple of years old, but I did like heavy rain. I did, there was a Batman Arkham one of the Batman games that had like just come out. So I was just like kind of emulating what I saw the top mm-hmm. guys doing, but it was, a I think it was like four or five months into that, that YouTube gaming like just came out or was a thing. So I was like, Oh, YouTube gaming streaming. This seems like way more fun than staring at my camera, talking to myself. Like I'll have a live chat. My viewers will be there and interact in the moment. So I gave it a try. And then I fell in love with streaming. So, wow. Yeah. And for your first stream, I mean, it's definitely, it, it's very different making YouTube content to live streaming. Obviously you yeah. got to start juggling chat. You got to start juggling a lot more stuff. You're already doing a lot more long form videos and playing through games, I guess. So maybe you're more comfortable with it in general, but how was that transition kind of starting to do live streaming? Yeah. I remember feeling like 
not completely overwhelmed, but it was definitely more to juggle. Like you have to do, yeah. in my opinion, way more multitasking when you're live because, oh yeah, hey, I have a teammate to talk to. I have my chat to talk to and I got to try to be good at this game and pay attention. So, and then also like making sure like your scenes are set in OBS and you don't accidentally hit a hotkey that like changes something and you zoom in your face cam and you, people can see your boogers, like, you know, stuff like that. So it was a little like overwhelming, but from my first live stream, I just, I knew I was like, this is so much more fun. This is way better. Like, yeah, it may be a little bit harder in some aspects, but I was like, I want to do this kind of a feeling. Mm. Okay. And then, so yeah. did that, I mean, like it, it definitely felt good when you're doing it. It yeah. was, it, it was a better experience overall as you're streaming it and you kept streaming on YouTube too, right? Yes. So that you already kind of had that built up Yeah. your videos and everything. So I assume it made it a better transition for that. Did you yeah. do any any videos after that or did it kind of just transition to doing um, just full on streams on YouTube at that point? Yeah, I, I ended up doing like too much. I think sometimes, well, I think a lot of content creators can relate to this, but it, so what I did was um, I was uploading uh, twice a day and then I started to like fall in love with streaming. So what I did was I would do like an upload at like 12 p.m. I would live stream, I think like, it was, I don't know, it was for a couple hours, like four to six, four to seven. And then after my live stream, I would like put out another video. So I was doing way too much and it ultimately led to some burnout. Um, mm. And then I toned back my videos and then I kind of just put more emphasis on my streaming. So I was doing a little too much, but uh, eventually what I did was I kind of like phased out the uploads and I was just streaming every day. Gotcha. And when you were doing, I mean, that that is a massive amount of content, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Um, even just two videos a day is yeah. <laughs> that's massive amount of content. Yeah. And this was like, but to to just understand, like you were just going in full throttle on yes. this, right? Like you didn't just kind of part time oh, I'm yeah. gonna try and throw up a couple videos here and there. This was like, all right, I'm gonna leave my job, yeah. move back home, I'm gonna start uploading videos, like I'm gonna figure this thing out. Yeah. Right. Like, exactly. and, and you start by start by emulating a little bit and kind of creating your own and then got into streaming, keep creating your own there too. Like, how did you, I guess, figure out or find your own voice, your own content as you kind of went through that? Because I think a lot of people start, I know I started in that way too. You kind of have a couple inspirations here and there and it keeps yeah. developing. Yeah. So that's yeah. a really good question. I think a lot of times like our viewers point out what they see in us that's different. So mm. Um, cause sometimes it's hard to like look in the mirror and, and see that about yourself, right? Sometimes we need someone else to like speak in our life and be like, Hey, this is what makes you different. This is what I appreciate about you. So for me, like I had a bunch of people like from day one, they're like, how are you so happy? How are you so positive? How are you so nice? And I'm constantly telling people like, I'm really not, I'm not that nice. I'm not that happy. I'm not that positive, but thank you guys. Like you're very sweet for saying that. So, but I think there's a, like, you know, people constantly tell you, you know, this David, like, you know, your fans will sing your praises and then you have all the trolls who like tell you all the horrible things about you. But it's like, mm -hmm. we're not that great and we're not that bad. So we're somewhere in the middle. So for me, it was like, well, thank you. Like you guys do, you you must see something like I, I must, you know, come across this way for a reason. So um, I guess just that's what kind of like made me stood out was that people felt like they could come and, you know, see someone who was really having fun and who was laughing and smiling. And it wasn't yeah. anything that I set out to do. I wasn't going to be like, I want to be this like positive, happy person. It just, I, it just kind of is what it is because that's who I am. So that's a really good question. I feel like I didn't have a good answer to that, but I think it's like, we're all just ourselves at the end of the day. So people, I guess, are drawn to me and my content because sure. of some of those reasons. Yeah, no, I think that's a great response. And I, you know, I don't think there's any like perfect answer to any of yeah. it, but, um, it, it's just interesting to hear your take and how you're, mm. how you kind of go through that a hundred percent. And I, I yeah. definitely see a, a lot of that as well. Oh, um, you. and <laughs> as you're, as you're creating and, and doing everything, like, do you think there was a specific moment? Maybe it was like, you know, while you're doing some YouTube content or maybe it was when YouTube mm. gaming came out, like, do you know, was there like a point where you started to really get a lot of traction on it or have any big breaks there? Or maybe it was even later on. Yeah, that's another good question. So for me, definitely, uh, when I started to stream, that's when I think everything kind of changed for me. So not only was I enjoying it so much more, 
but also back then on YouTube, like they were really pumping like new viewers your way if you were streaming on YouTube gaming. So I was, I remember one day I streamed Agario, which is like this really simple browser game where you're like, a, you're a little ball and you just like chase other balls around and just try to like eat them. And then you get bigger. Like it's right, like yeah. the stupidest little game, but like I was gaining hundreds of subscribers in like an hour back then wow. from like this, like super, like not even that popular hype up. So that was a huge like thing was like my focus on streaming. And also because of YouTube's focus on streaming, you know, they were pumping new eyeballs to, to everyone who was streaming back then. And then um, I got some really good advice. Uh, probably it was again, a couple months into my, my live streams where I was doing a variety of games. So I was doing like Rocket mm -hmm. League and GTA and Overwatch and whatever games I could like play with my viewers. So I do a lot of customs in those games to play with yeah, them. But yeah. um, I was also doing King of the Kill. So H1Z1, the King of the Kill. And I got advice and it, he was a, a manager back then for me, but he was like, um, or, you know, this might've been like a year in this was probably like, cause yeah, I think I had it. My first manager was like a year in. So, uh, into streaming, but he was like, sure. you know what? He's like, just for this week, he's like, let's just try for a strategy for my content. He's like, let's just try to focus on King of the kill. Just we'll call it King of mm. the kill week and Monday through Friday, just play King of the kill. And I did that. And I saw like an increase in concurrence back then. I was like, oh, okay. So then I started to just kind of focus on one game while also doing a variety here and there. Sure. But that really changed it for me. Like that understanding of, okay, like let's build an audience around a game or a genre mm -hmm. in that case, like BRs. And then like, we can still throw variety in, but you know, the fastest way to grow, at least back then, I would still argue today it's the fastest, but sure. focus on a game, build that audience around that game or that genre, and then still do variety. If that's, you know, what you, what your heart wants as well. That is awesome. And yeah. I, I definitely noticed that as well. And I, I think it's good, especially, you know, I assume you were streaming on YouTube at the time for that as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I mean, YouTube's just so algorithm based that, yes. you know, it sees one thing doing well. It's just like keep sending everybody mm -hmm. to the same type of content and everything. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. And so, <laughs> I mean, to see your kind of strategy shift from that. Uh, and then it kind of transitioned as well because now you're streaming on Twitch, right? Yes, yes. So how is, and I'm curious to you, like, how has that transition been to your audience? Because I know, you know, coming from a YouTube streamer, then going over to Twitch, I know a lot of people have been switching platforms, especially yeah. recently. <laughs> like, how did that experience go for your audience and, and for you on it even? Yeah, so I didn't do the kind of like cold stop where it was like sure. okay. yesterday I was on YouTube and then, hey guys, tomorrow we're all going to Twitch. So what I did was um, I started, oh gosh. So about almost a year and a half ago, I became a Twitch affiliate. So as an mm. affiliate, you can still stream on other platforms. You just can't stream at the same time. Like you can't dual stream. Interesting. Okay. So what I did is I started um, at 6 p.m. Eastern, which is my normal schedule. I would stream on YouTube as always. And then at about nine or 10. So after a couple hours, I'd be like, okay, guys, the stream isn't over. We're just going to go hang out on Twitch. If you guys, you know, want to come play Fortnite or do whatever, we're going to, you know, top it off on Twitch kind of a thing. So I would use my YouTube stream to promote my Twitch and try to funnel people over there. And I did that for a year as an affiliate. So I got people oh. used to Twitch and then I right. partnered um, back in, I think, August. That's awesome. And yeah. was that, uh, I'm just curious, like, was that like something that was kind of just like a diversification for like, Hey, you know, Twitch is doing great. I've got some extra time rather than working on a video. Let's try and build up a Twitch audience as well. Like what was your thought process for even wanting to, or was it like just the community was different there? It felt better. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I guess when I first became an affiliate, uh, in my, like it's, it's multifaceted this response, but the, yeah, biggest, sure. the biggest thing for me was that I felt like YouTube gaming had made no real progression in the three years that I've been streaming on it. Mm. So that was my, my real concern was that it's been three years. Like, why can't we, so they call them memberships instead of subscribers, right. but like, why can't we gift memberships? Like why, why does super chat take 30%, which is their equivalent of bits. So there yep. were, I had all these questions and I was like, why are there no new features? Basically in like three years, they really hadn't done much in my opinion. And I was like, this is really concerning. 
So I was like, you know what, Twitch with uh, Twitch Prime and gifted subs and all these awesome features, you know, squad streaming, I think had just come out when I was thinking about being a fit, like all these cool mm -hmm. features on Twitch. I was like, Twitch is a real streaming platform. YouTube, in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's a video platform with a little bit of an emphasis on streaming, like maybe mm. if you could even say that. So I was like, you know what, like I love streaming so much. I need to give Twitch a try. So that's where that like initially stemmed from. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but you still keep up your YouTube. Like that's still, you're uploading videos there. That's still part of your content. And you kept that yeah. audience from people that didn't necessarily come over or maybe they did. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I still, I try to upload like once a week maybe. So it uh, just kind of depends on the, the content, but it's, it's a weird thing. Like my, like 90% of my subscribers on YouTube are from my live streams. So they're not like, Mm. they're not really used to like uploaded content, if you will. And again, I yep. don't know if you've heard people talk about, they're like, oh yeah, if you upload on YouTube and then you try to live stream, your live streaming, like it, it may affect your your video views. I don't know if you've heard people talk about that at all. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've definitely heard of it. I've definitely, I think, experienced it. I used to stream on YouTube a bunch, similar when yes. YouTube gaming was out. I had a, I, yeah. I mean, I gained a ton of traction off that as well, for sure. Yeah. Um, But then, you know, trying to mix YouTube videos and yes. streams it seems like after you do a stream the next video is like yeah um people are, you know it be and i think a lot of it goes back to the algorithm of like you know how does youtube keep funneling people to content and showing yeah. stuff um and it's trying to learn and figure that out too but yeah i don't know uh it definitely seems like they've been doing more more stuff with streaming lately too but yeah it's definitely awesome to see i, I mean it looks like you've been absolutely crushing it on twitch Thank and you. uh it <laughs> it's awesome to see you taking part of a bunch of events and everything with all that yeah. too. It's um, a, it's been a huge blessing. Like I, I really love Twitch. And again, like they just released like the hype train feature, which is super yeah. cool. Like, you know, it literally has like a fun little banner when people start to like cheer and subscribe, you, you can trigger it. And it like, it just, it's just, it's just cool. Like they have really cool features that encourage your viewers supporting you. And I'm just, I just love it. Yeah. And I honestly, I think it's, it's, a great testament to your community that you had so many yes. people come over and, and stick with you on that because it is something that I think is very rare on yeah. uh, on a lot of for a lot of people is to get people to kind of go from one platform to another. Um, but yeah. I, I definitely see like you know you did that for so many reasons for the audience for the content yeah. for what you can do. Um, that that's really cool. Yeah. And, and it's awesome to see the support that, uh, you know, your community and everybody's had for you. Sounds like you've really been enjoying it, too. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, I think a lot of people, too, when they're first starting to do this um, or even, you know, three years, four years, five years, whatever in telling other people what you're doing is also challenging. I think you talked about this a little bit ago, but like how was the support from from your family, from your friends, as you're doing this when you're starting out and and today too? Yeah. Um, so at first, like, again, that initial call with my dad, like my parents had like no idea, like they <laughs> literally like didn't really know what YouTube was like. So, um, but they were amazingly supportive. So I, I just think that speaks to like, they literally didn't understand, right? They, they have no idea what's going on. What, like, why, why does their daughter want to do this and put herself out there online? <laughs> Yet, like, there's every reason that a parent could be, like, totally not supportive, and that would make sure. sense. But they yeah. were just like, we want to support you. We care about you. We want you to be happy. Like, we're here for you. And they do an amazing job. Like, even to this day, like, they're almost in my live streams every night. So they go out of their way to try to learn my world. Yeah. And, and I just think, like, what parents, like, they're, they're just amazing. Like, who does that? They're so awesome. They're like my best friends, if you can't tell. I'm I'm so yeah. working no, on them. No, seriously. them. <laughs> It, it's it, that's it really is so amazing yeah. and uh you know it, it's great to see and then i'm curious too like did you did you tell any of your other friends about it or maybe people that you're working with that like hey i'm gonna go start a youtube and try and do this yeah or, did, or was that not part of it yeah no i definitely like told my friends and even so like oh gosh back then i'm old like like mid-20s so even like for friends my age you know five yeah. years ago even you know, in, in our mid twenties, like even a lot of them were like, what, like, what, what the heck, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you, YouTube? Like they knew what YouTube was, but like they, you know, it just wasn't a thing to just like try to be a YouTuber. So yeah. even a lot of them were like, 
what are you doing? Like, this is awesome. But, uh, okay, Julie, like, sure. Like, you know, <laughs> you're gonna be homeless in a year kind of a thing. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, even then, like my friends would to this day, like they still pop in my streams. And I think now as it becomes a little more like quote unquote mainstream to like want to do YouTube or be a streamer, um, I, you know, I, I think most people are starting to understand and like respect it and appreciate it or even want to do it themselves. But uh, yeah. yeah, back then, like even my friends were like, we don't know what you're doing, but we're definitely going to tune in to see what you're up to. So definitely very yeah. supportive. Yeah, I know. And I feel like too, a lot of people, you know, that at least I'm associated with now, like at least understand what I'm doing to an extent. Yeah. But like, you know, if I go talk to somebody new or somebody outside of the industry, they're still like, wait, what? Like yeah. they, there's still like, there's still learning and education going on with it too. Yeah. Um, and I know not everybody can be supportive. And yeah. then too, like, even for you to go just full gun ho into it, I know a lot of people, it's hard to, especially like if you do have more of a structured schoolwork or job or something, you have a lot of that structure there already built in for you. Um, how did you kind of balance your time as you're doing this to like stay on a schedule, to do two uploads a day, to, to like to continue on with that. And then even today, like as you're doing it to stay on a schedule, if you, if you even do. Yeah. So I think back then, like it was just, I, I poured every ounce of energy, every second of my time into it when I first started out. So like, I really had no life at all. And like, I'm slowly getting better about it, like creating margin. So back then though, I literally, it was like every second, like we're editing or, you know, I'm preparing things for my mm. stream or whatever. And again, I think that was, that was very unhealthy and I did scale it back. So, uh, that was a struggle though, creating like margin, still something I'm working on, but nowadays, you know, I have my, you know, every day at 6 PM Eastern, but I take days off, you know, I just like hung out with my family the other day for my dad or for my brother's birthday. And I'm going to go hang out with them, you know, for my dad's birthday coming up. So I take the occasional day off as well yeah. so that it's not, you know, the everyday grind, but I do have the 6 PM Eastern. And then, you know, after my streams is kind of like my time to relax. So when I'm done, you know, I either, it's very rare, but may, you know, do an, an off stream Tarkov raid, you know, a, a quick scav run after the stream, just, you know, by myself, yeah. or I don't feel like I have to like, you know, <laughs> be paying attention to like 80 things at once and just can kind of chill or go watch Netflix. And then I wake up and kind of s start the day with uh, like a workout and I check my emails and kind of do the business stuff, you know, yep. before my stream starts as well. So a lot better today. And is that some, cause you'd mentioned earlier, like, you know, you started to feel burnt out to a degree. Was that something that you just f were feeling burnt out and you needed to make some changes or like, what triggered you to kind of even make some changes in the first place? Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it, it definitely was the, the feeling of, okay. So with every job, it's not, you're not going to love it a hundred percent, Sure. Um, but it was more so I just started like that feeling where I was like, just absolutely loving my job every day. Like that feeling that I had when I first started was starting to diminish. And I was recognizing that I'm like, I'm just not as excited today. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking forward to this as much today. And it kind of, it was just that gradual feeling over time where I was like, this just, this is starting to be a little overwhelming and not as fun. Mm -hmm. And then I also was like skipping meals and I was like, this just isn't healthy <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah. So it was just that gradual decline. And I just, I recognized it. I was like, okay, like I literally have like no time to do anything for myself outside of my business. Uh, I was like this, like, I need to tone it back. I, I need to create margin. So, yeah. Yeah, no. And it's something that it is really hard. And something I've talked to a lot of creators about is because like you can seriously just nonstop keep doing stuff. <laughs> it just does not ever end. Yes. And there are aspects of like, you know, Oh, do I really want to go through all my emails right now? Yeah. This is stacking like, you know, and there's definitely a lot to that. And uh, it's something too, like, uh, you know, that's something that I'm working on as well. I've got a trainer now. I'm trying to, you know, yeah. get myself to do some more other stuff. So I'm not just relentlessly yes. going, but um, yes. yeah, no, yeah. that's, that's really, uh, that's really interesting. Uh, we are getting uh, a little late on time here, so I don't want to keep you too <laughs> long, but um, I, I just want to know, like, what other advice might you have for creators out there? I know you've done some uh, talking about this in the past. I'm sure your audience has asked you, but like, what advice would you have mm -hmm. out there um, for other creators? Um, I would say that number one is 
don't ever be discouraged because with content creation, it is a roller coaster. And again, there's a lot of things outside of our control and not that it should ever be an excuse or a crutch for maybe why you aren't doing well, but like, you know, just like the YouTube algorithm, like sometimes there's just things outside of our control. So there's going to be days where maybe Twitch is like promoting you on the front page. And then maybe there's days where it's like your content just isn't being seen. So just power through the days where it just seems like you might not be doing as well as you would hope. And then relish the days where you have like a spike in concurrence or you get that awesome raid or host from someone. So just power yeah. through because it's a roller coaster. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. You got to just persevere. And then one tip I would say that I wish I had done sooner. Um, networking is like huge. Collaborating with other streamers or content creators, whatever it is. I like when I first started YouTube, again, I didn't know anyone really. I wasn't like constantly watching people. I didn't even know that like Twitch was a thing when I started YouTube. So um, yeah, the more that I started to be involved in the world of my business, which was YouTube and start to reach out to people, like the more that you just, I think, find a lot of enjoyment. You make friends who also know what you're going through, but just the, the collaboration yeah. where you can mix communities is great for everyone. It, it helps everybody grow. So reach out to people. Don't be afraid to, you know, tweet at someone or drop in someone's stream and say hi and like truly be involved in their community because that could lead to like a really cool friendship or a really cool opportunity in the future. I absolutely love that. Yeah. And uh, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I was very isolated as well, trying to figure things out. And yeah. You know, you kind of sometimes you just got to take some steps out and do some uh, yes. make some moves that you're not so comfortable with, but yes, can lead to some awesome things. Yeah, 100%. absolutely awesome. Um, Julie, thank you so much for joining us today. Where can people find you if they want to check out more from you? Where's the best place to go? Yeah, so all my socials are at one shot girl and there's some weird underscores, but it's O N E underscore S H O T underscore G U R L. But uh come say hi to me on Twitch. That's uh that's where I'm active the most. So any any night, 6 p.m. Eastern, come say hi. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining and go <laughs> check her out, everybody. Uh if you want to hear more pod podcasts and everything from us, you can find that at pipeline.gg. Thank you so much for joining us. This was awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye.